Since I'm running a bit low in storage space in my Dell PC, I'm going to go ahead and upgrade its memory. So I'll upgrade both its storage memory and its physical memory or RAM. So the first thing you should do is pop over to the Dell website and select your system and see if it's got a service manual. So in general, Dell keep very good documentation of their systems. And this is particularly true for the business models such as the Optiplex, the Precision and the Latitude ranges. And the business models are normally designed so they're easier to get into and they're a bit more durable when you take them apart. Some of the cheaper systems on the other hand may have quite fragile plastics and when you pry them apart some connectors may snap. So you should be careful um, when upgrading your system and just check to make sure that it looks easy enough to open. And in the case of this Optiplex 7060 Micro, it's pretty easy to do. So one of the best places to get both physical memory and storage memory is the Crucial website. And I'm trying to join their affiliate program so if I'm successful, I'll add a link to the description and if you're going to go and buy some products from them, uh, please use the affiliate link because it will help fund my guides. Okay, so you can go to the Crucial website and you can select your model or scan your system and you can see the compatible upgrades. Okay, so I've bought what I need for my system. But I've also got some other components, so let's just compare this. This is a 3.5 inch hard drive, so these are quite heavy, and this is 500 gigabytes, and they tend to use quite a lot of energy, so they heat up and they lower the battery life of your system. And because it's mechanical moving parts, they tend to be relatively slow. So you also get them in the 2.5 inch format and there's ones that have a small solid state drive catch on them called HSSDs, hybrid solid state drives. And older ones are basically slightly thicker than the newer ones. So Crucial, who sell replacement solid state drives, generally provide these with a spacer. So if you're affixing these to a laptop, make sure you've got the spacer in the right place and the drive is the right way. I actually had them upside down there with respect to each other. So here is a solid state drive in the 2.5 inch uh, form factor. But as you see, the 2.5 inch and 3.5 inch drives have the same connectors. So it can be used in both cases. For a system with a 3.5 inch drive, you would need a 2.5 inch to 3.5 inch enclosure to seat it properly. Okay, so let's have a look at uh, M2 SSD, otherwise known as NVMe SSD. And as you see, this thing is absolutely tiny compared to the 3.5 inch and 2.5 inch SSD. The M2 format is also available for some wireless cards, but these are smaller in length. Older wireless cards use the PCIe mini format. This is actually half height. They're relatively rare, but there are also solid state drives of a very similar looking format. These are called mSATA SSDs, and they were basically uh, intermediate between um, the 2.5 inch form factor and the NVMe or M2 SSD. So the PCIe mini port for wireless cards was far more common than the mSATA SSD. So you want to make sure that it's not a wireless card slot. Also, very few of these are being sold these days because they're relatively rare. And adapters for MSATA to M2 really don't work because the 
M2 SSDs are longer in length and basically the SSD won't fit in the system. Okay, so let's remove this screw and we can slide the cover off. Okay, so this Optiplex 7060 Micro, it has a bay for a 2.5 inch SSD, which is empty. So let's just slide this off just now. And here we can see we've got an M2 wireless card and an M2 SSD. So here's my spare M2 wireless card. And let's go ahead and change this 128 gigabyte SSD to a 1000 gigabyte SSD. Okay, so there's just a mounting screw for the SSD. And sometimes these get a bit rounded or you've got an empty slot without a screw. So they provide some spare screws with the M2 SSD. So let's just go ahead and slot it in. And then let's tighten up the mounting screw. Okay, so you want to make it tight, but you don't want to over tighten it. And now we just press these two tabs and pull the fan out. There'll be a cable here, so don't put it too tight. So we can just leave it down at the side and then pull these two tabs gently to remove the old eight gigabyte RAM module. So I'll just put that down at the side just now. And now I'm going to get my 16 gigabyte RAM module. And now it's just a case of clipping this in at the bottom slot. So just make sure the pins align and gently push it in. So it's nice and straight and then press down and then you want the clips to, to clip in to seat it. Okay, and now we do the same with the of a RAM module. Okay, so now we just need to put the fan back in place and then just push down the tabs. And now I might as well just install this 2.5 inch solid state drive because the, the bay is empty. So this system has a cat theme and it basically attaches to the four holes on the sides of the SSD. So just gently push the the caddy into these four holes and make sure they're in and then just slide the 2.5 inch SSD in place and now that's me done the hardware upgrades so I can just put the lid on and then tighten the screw And obviously, because these drives are new, this computer is going to be completely blank. So we'll need our bootable USB. And this is my Windows 10 
version 1903 Windows Insider USB. So when I power on the computer, I'll get this warning that the system memory has changed. And I'm going to press F2 to enter the setup utility. So I can go down and have a look at system information. And now we see that we've got 32 gigabytes of RAM and DIM1 has 16 gigabytes and DIM2 has 16 gigabytes. If we scroll down, we see I've got the i7 processor, 8th generation. So I didn't need to bother upgrading that. And we can see that SATA 0, that's a 2.5 inch, has 500 gigabytes. And SATA 4, which is the M2 or NVMe SSD, has 1000 gigabytes. Okay, so we can power it down and power it up and press F2 to get to the boot menu. And now we can install the operating system using a bootable USB. And my Dell Windows reinstallation guide will take you through downloading Windows 10, creating a bootable USB, cleaning installing Windows 10 using this bootable USB, and installing all system drivers using Dell Update. So let's just end on this, this screen and this screen shows the 2.5 inch to 3.5 inch mounting bracket which you may need to use in an older desktop. It shows more details about the 7mm to 9mm spacer used for the 2.5 inch solid state drives in older laptops. It's got the M2 SSD and M2 Wi-Fi Bluetooth card and it's got a picture of an MSATA SSD and a PCIe full height wireless card alongside the half height one. So as you see, these look very similar as I mentioned earlier. Okay, so hopefully you found this video useful and feel free to leave a comment or subscribe or share the video. And if you're going to upgrade your system, then please use my affiliate link because it will help cover my website costs and test hardware.